All right, and we are live, and I managed to even be 11 minutes late. So sorry about that uh, for everyone who's waiting. Just, um, yeah, one of the things I want to talk about on this show is Mercury retrograde. Um, it, this Mercury retrograde has been particularly brutal, and uh, it lasts, I think, until the 24th. I would have to look, April 24th, and then... Mercury will still be in sidereal Pisces, so basically functioning as retrograde anyway, and then it will move into Aries on May 11th, and if you're uh, a business person, uh, May 11th, your business should finally start clicking because probably you've been getting frustrated all, uh, basically all year with a very brief exception at the beginning of the year. All right, so we already got <clears throat> more than 10 people on, so I'll just go ahead and dive into things. Um, I want to open with, um, first of all, anyone who wants to shout out, go ahead and put their um, info in there. So Daniel Zach Smith, the man, always so generous, former angelic magic student, former astrology recipient, Juju Bear, lovely to see you. Uh, my man, Brenton, war, war. He's like, it's not war, it's war. <laughs> Even though it's spelled to me, I would pronounce that uh, war because it's double R. Um, Edward, uh, tinfoil hat, dude is super informative and hilarious. Oh, thank you, Edward. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I'm going to talk about is the tinfoil hat. Um, so, but nice to see you. You're preaching the choir. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Aether material. Um, let's see. Oops. And then next Zach Hansen, finally caught a live stream. Good to see you, Zach. Um, dimension, the dot recent tinfoil hat was epic. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was epic to be there. And I'll tell you all about it here in just a second. Irishman, good to see you, brother. A little, little alien action. Uh, you are hilarious. Deserve to be on Mount Crushmore. Oh, see, that is the that's the highest compliment you could pay. Thank you so much. Be sure you blow up his uh, chat with that. Hey, how's it going? Nice to see you, Brett, with, with a three, like old school hacker name. Um, okay, so, yeah, anyone else wants to shout out? If you have questions, I'll be answering questions in the second half. Just put it all in bold. And uh, moderator L should be on here fairly soon, and we'll just go from there. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, we, many of you are probably coming over from Tinfo Hat. I got a big boost, as always happens, because Sam is the man. I mean, in many ways, you could say this channel uh, and the better part of my career of, over the past 15 months or so has been directly due to Sam Tripoli. That guy absolutely boosted the ever living fuck out of the channel, which is amazing. Um, yeah. Oh, it's Heather Russo. This is the illustrious Heather who uh, is helping me to, we're going to do an in-person um, gathering for people who are interested in white Lotus of light related topics and subject matters. Uh, we're still working out the details on it, but um, Heather has already done, I guess I can't say yeoman's work, yeo woman's work, that doesn't quite roll off the tongue in the same way. Uh, but she has done incredible work. And so nice to see you, Heather. Um, and Brent, by the way, is um, the maestro behind. I've only had it on one episode so far. So I was talking about Mercury Retrograde. One of the things that really sucks is I was going to have Michael LaFlem on, who actually was also on Tinfo Hat not long ago to talk about Atlantis. I'm going to have him on. But the problem is, is that um, he... Uh, he, he's had multiple different equipment failures. I've been trying to record for a few weeks with him now, both before my epic trip to Mexico and then also since. Oh, and I just realized my sound probably sucks. Mercury retrograde strikes again. Let's see here. Hopefully people can at least hear me a little bit. So let's see if that, I may need to just real quick mute mic. No, I need to change. Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't know whether that automatically switched to my better mic. Let me see. Does it sound okay? Okay, good. Sorry about that. Jeez, that's a bummer. Um, I don't think there's any, oh, maybe under settings, audio. Yeah, it's still using the tiny one. There we go. So that should be an improvement. Is it better now? Does that sound better? I bet it does. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, that was a perfect example of Mercury retrograde. For people who don't know anything about astrology, it's actually one of the things you can point to that's the most consistent in astrology, except for maybe people going nuts on the full moon, right? That's where the term lunatic comes from. But a Mercury retrograde <clears throat> means that the planet's moving backwards from the perspective 
of those of us here on earth. And it just takes on a different quality that ha- tends to do with review and uh, looking at what has happened for you related to that planet's indication since the last retrograde and reviewing. It should be a time of planning and strategizing, looking over data, things like this, right? Um, and then when it goes forward, it, it, it suddenly takes on the positive qualities of communication, business, transportation, um, communications technology, uh, just the ability to use the like sort of left brain part of the mind. Uh, and when it's retrograde, all those things are super harmed. And so you have problems with technology, especially communications related technology, and also travel. And if you're combining communications technology and travel, you can be assured that there's going to be some major things go epically wrong. So I just want to give you guys the inside scoop of Sam uh, being in the studio of Sam Tripoli. So I went to Mexico uh, for a Templar thing and also to um, do some work with my buddy, Nick. I don't know if you're watching Nick. I'm sure you'll catch it later. If not, um, he's one of my VIP clients and he's become, I, I, somehow, some way, this man has become probably my best friend, which is just weird. I mean, um, some amount of people that I do services for, I end up becoming friends with. It actually shows up in my chart, but it's, it's not super common. And for some, me to like, just be like, oh my gosh, I love this person. It's now happened maybe four times from over the years of working with people um, out of hundreds and hundreds of clients. So it's fairly rare, but I was down there with Nick um, to do some Templar stuff, meet with uh, Grandmaster of the Templar, Timothy Hogan. We went to all these Mayan sites. And then afterwards I went to um, LA and I met with another VIP client uh, from a family that's kind of more private. Everybody would know their name. It's a bummer. I can't say it publicly. Literally everybody would know this family's name. And then, um, to shoot with Sam Tripley because I knew I was shooting right around the time and it just lined up and I was like, Hey, can I come in the studio Would that work? You know, or maybe he suggested it. Cause I was like, I'm going to be in LA. Um, we could do it in the studio. We could get dinner. Unfortunately, he's just too busy. Like, man, that guy's phone was blowing up like uh, logic at his peak. It was just ring, 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 text, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he was clearly overwhelmed. Like he's at a level of fame. That's, you know, uh, gosh, 50 times what I'm at in terms of like subscriber count, something, let's see, 50. Yeah, about that. So he has like probably about 300,000 subscribers. And it just is a different level of like people trying to get your attention, asking questions and stuff. Like I'm getting to the point to where if people are asking questions and it's not about a service, if it's not in the live stream, I just can't really do it. So if you ever have questions for me, just ask me in the live stream, because if you're going to ask me an email, I, I may not be able to do it. So I cannot imagine what it's like for Sam. I'm sure he long ago abandoned replying to comments, answering uh, emails and stuff like that. And so he was just super busy and he was doing stuff. And then he basically sat down and turned it on. But I will tell you this. He is a gem. He's so much better in person than he is like hearing him over, you know, like watching his show. He's just He's so amazing. He's so wonderful. He's sweet. He has this really high vibration. He's very sharp and quick. He's super funny, of course. Duh, he's a comedian, right? Um, And then XG is like even sweeter and nicer than he appears on that show. And Johnny's basically exactly the same as he appears on that show. I love Johnny, but he's just very acerbic, right? He reminds me of my younger brother, actually. And Johnny gave me huge props after the show, which actually was more humbling than XG and Sam saying nice things because XG and Sam are, you know, kind of enthusiastic and like, are like, yeah, it's something new, fresh, whatever. Johnny's like, "Mm." you know, it's like, you got to take up the, you got to take up the, oh, what is that thing? Beef Wellington. And you got to take it up to the two judges, but then Gordon Ramsay cut steps up. You know what I mean? That's the, that's Johnny's energy. And he was super complimentary after the show, which was like actually really kind of the uh, highest compliment. Um, he's quite funny as well. Like he's funnier when he's not on camera than he is um, whatever, but he's just real like stealth mommer come in and make a hilarious joke and fly off and like really dry humor. He's very sharp as well. He's definitely a very smart man. So um, it was fantastic to be in the studio with Sam was just such an honor and a privilege. And um, Sam is even better and cooler than he appears hundred percent. I'm actually going to go on the 27th to Eugene so uh, his Eugene, Oregon show, I just live about an hour north of that in Corvallis. And so <clears throat> I'm going to go to that and, 
you know, if you're, if you live in Oregon and you're going to Sam's show, like I'll be there, um, you know, and feel free to come up to me and say, hi, I would, you know, that'd be great. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to hang out with Sam. Hopefully I'm going to try and talk him into dinner. I think in Eugene, I could get him to dinner in LA. He's just booked, right? He's just booked. I mean, he literally told me that he was in the parking lot and Joe Rogan said to him, cause they've been friends for like 25 years. Joe Rogan said, I think I might do a podcast. <laughs> it's like Newton going, I might do some maths. <laughs> and then he invents calculus, right? <laughs> Joe Rogan, like, can you imagine? Like, that's actually a historical event. It's a historical event in media. I mean, basically, Sam Tripoli saw Joe Rogan really decide in real time to do the greatest podcast on earth. That's just exceptional and extraordinary. Like what a, what a cool thing to see. Um, I tried to be like, Sam, can you get me on Joe? I had to shoot my shot, right? Like I had to shoot my shot. If you can get on Joe Rogan, like it's life changing. Like it's been life changing to be on Sam, but Joe, Joe is to Sam what Sam is to me, right? In terms of subscribers, like he's 50 times more. He's like 4 million, 5 million, whatever ridiculous number. You know what I mean? To Sam's, Mere 300,000, which by the way is, if you are a content creator, getting to 10K seems like an impossible goal, right? Like even getting to 1K seemed impossible until I hit 1K and now I'm on the march to 10K. But getting to 100,000 is nutty and getting multiple hundreds of thousands, like you're fire. You're just on a completely different level of excellence and elite. And then Joe Rogan's just like, I mean, he's the, he's not even the gold standard. He's like that. What's that stuff that's super rare in Avatar? I forget what that stuff's called. Unobtainium. Because <laughs> you cannot obtain Joe Rogan's level of uh, podcast excellence and just fucking that man. The, the, Sam said that Joe Rogan's superpower is being able to read what is within the bounds of, pol of politics and then pushing just past that, just past that to kind of push and expand just a little bit, the political sphere. And he knows exactly how much to push without getting into big trouble. And it is impressive for sure. So it was, it was amazing to be with Sam in the studio. I just feel unbelievably blessed and humbled. And um, he really exudes goodness. He really does. Like XG seems super nice and super sweet and like a really good person. Johnny seemed like a good person who's like kind of like wants to be a troll under the bridge and grab your leg when you go by, but it's just, it's for your own good, just to remind you to keep on your toes kind of energy. Right. Whereas um, XG is just super sweet. And then Sam just, Sam has radiates most high energy. That's the best way of putting it. I mean, he's a real Christian. You can tell he's always, always, always working hard to help other people. Uh, and then he puts out a phenomenal product and he's a living proof that you can swear and be filthy and drop in bombs on Twitter, apparently, and still be most high uh, related. He didn't use the hard R, of course, which does actually matter. So um, Shadow Wars, gosh, um, I'm trying to think of like what kind of update I want to give on that. Uh, there's so much going on that it's it's actually difficult to track. Um you know, on the tinfoil hat episode, I didn't know, like I've known for years, of course, that the Trump campaign was spied on by the, uh, by the Obama campaign, right? Sort of, or Obama presidency, rather, Obama administration, basically at the behest of Hillary, right? And as part of the DNC, WEF, whatever. So that's like a Watergate times a thousand, what Obama did, but it wasn't like some of the details weren't clear. And Sam pointed out, I haven't even noticed this, but back in January um, or maybe February, whenever the Super Bowl was, uh, it came out that uh, right after the Super Bowl, it came out that Obama uh, had used the five eyes. So like the British, Australian, New Zealand spy agencies to spy on Trump uh, in order to circumvent certain uh, American laws against spying on people domestically directly. They were using the two hop rule to get to Trump. They were using all kinds of stuff. But the five eyes spy for one another. Like if Britain needs a British citizen spied on, which is illegal, right? You mostly, unless they're terrorists or certain things, they just ask the U S to do it. And then we do it. And then when we need someone in America spied on, we ask the Brits to do it. And Christopher Steele is X. If you ever leave MI6, right. And he did the whole steel dossier. So that bomb drops. And the next day there's the Kansas city um, victory parade shooting. Right. 
And that was definitely not by accident. And so um, one of the other things we talked on that show uh, about is that the, you know, when, for those of you who are new to the channel, I talk a lot and it's really important and it's sort of like, I would say the key that unlocks all the content on this channel that without which you won't really understand it. If you haven't watched Shadow Wars episode one, when this stream gets done, or even if you want to, you could just pause the stream where it is at now or make a note of the time and come back and go watch that. It might even be worth it to do that. It's so important. But just a real quick thumbnail sketch is there's three levels of consciousness on the, on the uh, earth at this time. The most dominant one, although it's starting to crumble, is Malachian consciousness. And this is, you're either with us or against us. There's pedophilia, there's physical torture, there's hive mind mentality. And the core trait of the Malachian consciousness, which is rooted and emanates from the biblical Canaanite god Haman Baal of Tyre and Carthage, a.k.a. Moloch, a.k.a. Kronos, a.k.a. the lower aspect of Saturn, right? The black cube. Right. That's why you see the black cube and all the Moloch controlled uh, aspects of Abrahamic faith. You see it all over the place. Even the cross, certain uh, certain visualizations of the cross are an unfolded cube turns into a cross. Right. So the Moloch have put their marker that they control the leadership of those religions. Now, I'm not saying right that there isn't like Kabbalah, which is a beautiful, uplifting form of Judaism or uh, there's not Christians who have found true salvation through Jesus Yeshua. Absolutely the case, 100%. Sam seems to be one of them, for example, um, because he does good works, which is key. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Um, but there's, there's, uh, you, you see that marker, the black cube. So then there's, um, their core trait is self-hatred, and then they project it outward. They project it outward and then they do heinous crimes. Um, and they're the lowest ebb of that and what allows Moloch to touch the world is the harm of children, the destruction of innocence, and in particular pedophilia and then adrenochrome and, you know, like child sacrifice. Very, very, very dark stuff. Fortunately, this is going to be gone in a fairly short period of time. The Luciferians have to destroy it in order to close all the portals to the lowest part, the pit of that lower astral where Moloch reaches through and touches the world. So in order to take over, Lucifer and the Luciferians have to wipe out pedophilia. It's like actually the most important thing they can do from a strategic point of view on a spiritual level. That's why I suspect that Musk is straight up literally either dominated, Lucifer dominates him through the conscious, any, whatever level of consciousness you're at, there is a chance and a risk that the deity can reach through you and they can reach through several tens of thousands of people simultaneously on earth or hundreds of thousands, perhaps. There is an outer limit to which they can directly control. And the more they're split, the weaker the control, the more they're focused, the more they can have direct control. Usually the person has to allow themselves to be taken over. But if someone's consciousness is deeply rooted in that, the deity can reach through them. And it's it, you see it most commonly among very powerful people. And I feel that Lucifer reaches through Elon Musk as one of his primary people. And he got rid of pedophilia on Twitter. He like basically closed that particular online portal as kind of a fuck you and a warning and a shot across the bow to the mock. And so the Luciferians, if you look at the uh, Venn diagram, I'm going to try to do this. I don't know. It seems like people have been saying that my, uh, my, um, Screen share doesn't work, which is super disappointing, but I'm going to see if I can get it to uh, share this diagram because it's just a real easy, quick reference that helps you to um, visualize it. So give me just one second here. My apologies for not only having this up. Like I said, Mercury retrograde, it has been a doozy this time around. Okay, let's see. I think if I go here, nope. Jeez Louise. So this visual will help and it's absolutely worth it to find it. Um, probably this and then go here. Sorry. I'm like going 500,000 miles deep into my folders to get to the thing. Here we go. Boom. And then now I got to do share screen. My apologies, y'all trust me. It's worth it. Especially if it works, please let me know if when this, if this comes up or not. So let me know, please, immediately down on the chart. Do you see now a chart 
of the Venn diagram. So I'm going to real quick look and see what people are saying. Yeah, it really is all about the kids. So hopefully you guys are seeing this, this thing. So you can see the core trait, self-hatred, all the bad stuff. What's relevant here is Luciferians, their core trait is actually narcissism instead of self-hatred, which is better, actually. It's better. It results in better behavior because it allows for things like enlightened self-interest, rule of law over man, meritocracy, honoring of contracts. It does also allow for hierarchy, conquest, competition, desire for power, and ruthlessness. And this is where the shadow war is taking place because this is going to be cut off from this sphere, which is where humanity's dominant consciousness will be. And far more rare will be people dipping into Malachian consciousness or going all the way up into full most high consciousness. You can see then that, that there's also uh, crossover cooperation, advancing the arts and sciences, spiritualization of humanity, important uh, improved material well-being of humanity, liberty and free will. And the core trait of the most high is love thy neighbor as thyself, the greatest teaching of Jesus Yeshua. And you see innocence is protected this is uh, theoretical. This is what the angels have told me. Individuated telepathy, harmonious duality, which means divine masculine, divine feminine. And then all is one, all is God. Love thy neighbor as thyself actually means to recognize that God created you and God exists within you because you're an aspect of God. Not you are God, right? That would be narcissism, right? But that you are an aspect or like, imagine like a hair on God. Like, is this part of Ian, this hair? Yes, I think we would all agree. But would you really say that this hair is on par with the completeness of me? No, you would not. But in a similar way, we're like a hair on God, but it's that we're an aspect of the mind of God, right? So all is one, all is God, symbiosis, non-hierarchical union, and perfect trust, right? So all of that is what differentiates most high consciousness from Luciferian. And what differentiates Luciferian from Malachian is this enlightened self-interest, rule of law over man, meritocracy, honoring of contracts. And then this is shared, right? And this is sort of where my consciousness tends to rest, is in lower, most high consciousness and upper Luciferian. I do tend to hold some of these ideals, like rule of law over man seems awful important right now. Meritocracy seems awful important, honoring of contracts. And I see the wisdom of enlightened self-interest if that's the only way that people can understand to come together to... Uh, love one another, if that's the only way that they can, uh, or not love one another, but not be brutal to one another, then, you know, that's clearly superior to this stuff down here. So that is where the the fight is happening. And they're going to be utterly ruthless with the Malachians. And that's kind of what has to happen, right? Like turning the other cheek does not work with these people, right? Which is what Yeshua taught us to do. It will work with the Luciferians and it will actually drive them nuts. But it doesn't work with Malachians. They just kill you or torture you or both, right? So uh, the Epstein stuff keeps coming up. And it's because they're applying pressure, 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 pressure on all these pressure points. Man, if you read the Pascal Najati <coughs> um, Telegram channel, it's absolutely insane. <coughs> and like all what I call Luciferian propaganda... There's a combination of truth and like amazing truth bombs and then also um, lies that are squatting right in the middle of it. And those lies are there to provide plausible deniability and also to create um, to create confusion in the enemy because they put these like horrific pressure points, right? Talking about real crimes, whatever kind of stuff. And then they... Um, then they have lies in there that are like obviously false. And the Malachians are like, we're not doing that. Is, is anybody doing this? What does anybody, do? they might even waste time trying to figure out, is that one of our million and one psyops we're running? What's going on? So it creates confusion in the enemy. And one of the traits of the Luciferians is they have a cloak of Luciferian confusion. <clears throat> and that's why Malachians mistake them for fellow Malachians because they think in chaotic duality, they think in good and evil. And because that's the dominant consciousness at the time and evil is so pervasive, most, most high people, right? Malachians are Maoris for shortcut. Luciferians are Lucy's and most high are Mosties, right? I love that one, right? I actually came up with that one. Um, so people in my group were calling the Luciferians, uh, my angelic magic group were calling the Luciferians Lucy's, which I love. So I came up with 
Molly's, which isn't the strongest, but then most of these I like quite a lot, actually. So, um, gosh, what, what was I saying there? The uh, There was an important thread. Yeah, so the Luciferian propaganda always has this element of this Luciferian confusion. And so most high people see the Luciferians as Malachians, and so did the Malachians. But they're a very distinct separate group, which will become readily apparent in the months to come as the shadow war breaks out into the daylight. Um, and so I think that that, um, you know, the, the, I forget what it's called, the Francis Scott Key or whatever bridge in Maryland that collapsed and there was a um, container ship that hit it. Uh, I believe that that container ship was, um, had human trafficking on it. Most container ships have some amount of human trafficking. Actually, if you watch The Wire uh, season two where they're on the docks, in Baltimore, there's human trafficking. It's very prominently, um, it's very prominently uh, displayed. It's like kind of the center focus for, of the police investigation season two. Is they find this container with all these dead women in it, and someone's knocked the uh, air pipe closed, and all the women suffocate in there. It's quite horrific, and uh, they're female prostitutes, and and so that's in Baltimore, <laughs> on a container ship. And that people on the docks are paid off to look the other way by criminals. Right? So I think that that was a shot across the bow. It came days after P. Diddy and that Epstein for Hollywood or Epstein for the music industry kind of disclosures, right? Which they're just now realizing we debanked Kanye and uh what, whatever his name is, Paul Lindell, the My Pillow guy, we debanked those guys instantly when we wanted to, but we didn't with P. Diddy. But he's finally starting to lose endorsements. But it took like a week. The endorsement people are like, are we going to back him? I feel like that we can't just back this guy, right? <clears throat> Eventually, some bean counters prevailed there and said, we can't, we got to not back this guy any. But as far as you know, the banks haven't debanked him the same way they didn't debank Epstein when he was squatting right in the middle of. JP Morgan, which by the way, I think JP Morgan is actually a Luciferian controlled bank, and they now have that delicious financial record of Epstein that they can draw upon. Okay, so there's you know the shadow war, something that I comment on ongoing on the channel to give my opinion of various events that are going on. Uh, I've been massively next level busy this week getting caught up after my trip with work stuff. And so I just haven't had a, a chance to like go super deep this week on what's going on with the shadow war. So angelic magic and the spiritual second amendment. So probably most people watching this are pro second amendment. If you're not, I highly recommend you read up on history and the importance of specifically long barrel rifles in warding off tyrannical uh, states or occupying armies. Look at the Taliban. They held off the U.S. military, the finest on earth, with World War I era rifles that were super long range. They'd get way up in the mountains. They would shoot. They'd run into the little crevasses that they knew. They'd shoot an American soldier and run away. They would have never done that with a pistol or a shotgun, right? That's why they're always trying to ban rifles of all kinds. And they don't seem to care about pistols and shotguns because they know that it would be almost impossible to get to someone who's elite past their security with a pistol or shotgun. Sniping them from range, though, is very, very possible and is a huge security problem for them. So they'd like to get rid of it. And uh, rifles that are like semi-automatic um, and fairly significant magazines, those can actually be used in significant guerrilla actions. And that's why they're constantly trying to get rid of it. And you'll notice the countries that got rid of their guns, right? All the rest of the English-speaking countries other than India and Suriname and a handful, but all the like English diaspora is a better way of putting it. Former British colonies, including the United States, right? They all the countries that gave up their guns to a significant degree had it way worse during the pandemic than the US, where in Florida, you might have not even realized there was a pandemic, right? So that's the importance of the Second Amendment. Most people are pretty familiar with that. What if I told you that one of the greatest tricks the Malachians ever pulled was by taking over the Abrahamic faiths? And in two of the three, outright banning magic, banning astrology, saying psychic abilities, yoga, all this stuff that helps elevate you to additional senses and additional spiritual abilities. They did that intentionally 
as a spiritual removal of the Second Amendment in magical terms. Just let that sink in for a minute. Do they use magic? Yes. Right? Imagine if they had all the guns. How do you think that would go, guys? But they did that with magic for a thousand years, primarily by taking over the uh, Abrahamic faiths at the leadership level, not the individuals, because there's good and amazing, most high aligned people in all three of those religions. But at the leadership level, they, they have control of basically all the three main Abrahamic faiths. And they had a little something else, too. In the 1850s, the British Royal Society pushed dead materialism and said, if you want to be an expert in the sciences, you have to not be a generalist, right? Not be a multidisciplinarian like all the scientists of old, like Newton, for example, right? You have to be a specialist, so you can't understand the fullness of what's going on in, re in reality. You get siloed in your research, and you have horse blinders on, not thinking about how this piece of science connects to this piece of science. And then they have their corrupt scientists at the top who are able to do that, but they keep those guys under wraps and with a gun to their head to control them. And they control a very small amount of people. The same way they compartmentalize in intelligence agencies or like at the Vatican Library, things like that. They did that with science. And they said, if you're to be taken seriously in science, you must be a dead materialist. Newton was into astrology. Newton was into alchemy. Just to give a very, very prominent, well-known example, Giordano Bruno, same, right? Giordano Bruno was a Rosicrucian and a Templar. Uh, he's like in the Templar lineage that I'm in. So it used to be that scientists were also very often magicians, alchemists, astrologers, all of the above right? And then the 1850s, the Royal Society got rid of it. So all of a sudden, you have a complete control across the entire Western world of getting rid of magic, getting rid of astrology, denouncing psych uh, psychic abilities as psychiatric liabilities, right? Of course, if you make psychic ability plus trauma, you'll get like a schizophrenic who's, you know, mumbling under the bridge or attacking people, right? Because the trauma puts them in tune and in vibration with the lower astral, and it gives them an inability to control things because they were traumatized, right? And if the trauma is bad enough and the psychic abilities are heightened enough and you don't turn off the psychic abilities, those two things in combination can lead to a lot of the classic mental illnesses. In ancient times, a shaman would have recognized that as talent, would have taken the person under the wing, healed the trauma, taught them control, and taught them how to be in a vibration with higher order beings, right? So I practice theurgic angelic magic. I started out doing um, what are called sometimes the 72 Shem angels. The particular tradition I use is a Hebrew tradition that's traced back to King Solomon. And that was given to him by the angels directly. Like Archangel Gabriel gave him his signet ring. I believe it was Gabriel. And then... Uh, he also gained knowledge of both how to control demons and jinn. I don't recommend it. And also angels. And Solomon happens at the exact nadir, the lowest point in the descending Kali Yuga, right as it's going up is when the Temple of Solomon and the time of Solomon is basically at the lowest ebb of consciousness. And it's interesting because he was like, on the one hand, I hold darkness and control it. And with the right hand, I control angels. He was very much a gray magician. I'm a white magician. I work only basically at this point almost exclusively with the angels there's some amount of other deities such as lord thoth the patron of magic healing astrology writing uh knowledge in uh hindu mythology i do work with lord thoth there's some others like lakshmi the goddess of abundance i mean you know ganesha who's the god of astrology and wisdom and the remover of obstacles in um the vedic texts but i work almost exclusively like 95% of the time with just the angels. And I started out with the 72 Shem angels, right? And I have a whole video. You should watch it on the nine angelic choirs and what each of them teach you. But the first layer teaches you that the angels are there to serve us. And they're there to a certain degree for us to gain trust by getting immediate tangible material results. So I'm actually having a class on May 16th. And uh, it's being structured in a new way so I can have more students than usual. And I'm teaching people how to work with the angels. Now, when you work with demons, that's evocation. 
You're attempting to grab the vibration of natural law and you're bending it to your will and you're holding it really tight. And the thing about black magic is you hold it and you struggle and you dominate it with your will and then it snaps back eventually. Usually if it's an excellent black magician, it'll be at the end of their life. Someone doesn't know what they're doing. It can blow up in their face immediately, right? Because you're trying to grab that vibration. You're trying to change the outer world to reflect your egoic desire. And that creates corruption in your soul. And it's actually devastating. It would be, it's very difficult actually to harm people with black magic unless you have, unless the black magician uh, has a karmic right to do some kind of like extreme curse on someone. And that's actually kind of tricky. Um, so, so it's, they usually can't do black magic unless they have your consent. That's part of the revelation of the method is to get your consent. It's not so much about avoiding karma. Some of them seem to believe this, but I think most of them, the masters know that they're dealing with karma and they have a way of re reincarnating and family lines, but their time is running out and they're going to end up, uh, they're going to end up basically the, the worst of the worst, like the ultimate priests and magicians of Moloch that have been reincarnating in the same lines or sometimes outside of it and just being super powerful. Those magicians are, they're not going to reincarnate. They're going to end up actually becoming demons for four cycles of the great years. That's what the angels have told me. So white magic is that you do evocation. You invite the angels in to help you find areas within yourself that need to be refined and changed in order to have your vibration match that of natural law. And so you, if, if this is the vibration of reality, you try and go with it, much like a surfer riding a wave. But you do that by changing yourself, by inviting the angels in for you to look into your blind spots and, and areas where there's blockages around whatever kind of magic you're working with. Let's say you're asking for abundance, right? And by the way, it is okay to ask for abundance, you got to be careful how you do it. And I teach ethics in my class. It's like a huge chunk of it. It's teaching ethics and morality with magic, which is very tricky. Oh, I was going to say earlier, if you if you were to use black magic to kill someone, karmically, it's three times worse than just shooting them. Doing something in the material realm has a completely different, basically one third impact of doing something magically. Why? Because when you do something magically, you're saying, I am going to consciously help co-create reality. That's a big, big, big decision to make. And its implication is extreme karma for whatever you're doing. If you do black magic, it's really bad karma. Triple of doing the material version of that act, right? If you do good magic, white magic, then you can actually get positive karma from it. And tremendous amount of positive karma because you're basically moving in alignment with the creator God of our realm, the most high, right? That Yeshua talks about. If you look, he called... He never says Jehovah or Yahweh because it's not the same being. He says, my father in heaven or the most high. There's a third term he uses. I can't remember. But that deity is the creator of this earth realm. And because it's the creator, matching your vibration with that creator's energy and over time submitting your will actually to the most high is what allows you to to change reality around you by changing yourself. And when you go up the higher, they test your character relentlessly. And the higher up you go, the more inner work you have to do. But the angels at the first level, the 72 sham angels, they teach you about service, that, that the angels are here to serve us. Archangels teach us about service to others and watch the nine choirs to learn about what each angelic choir uh, teaches you. And I, it, it was, took me a full year of tremendous effort. I've probably almost never put so much effort to anything in my life. I was doing 44 day rituals for sometimes three hours, four hours, even with the seraphim, the lower order angels. Uh, I didn't have to spend as much time, but I was hyper, hyper, hyper dedicated and hyper dedicated to looking at my blind spots, refining my character. I talk about it a lot in this channel. But the Shem angels just start this process. It was the first thing that I did. And it's awesome. When the magic works, you're just blown away. But demons, when you ask a demon for magic, the demon will say, you say you'd summon a demon, you'd ask for a bunch of money, right? Say, I want a million dollars. And the demon says, so you want a million dollars. Is that correct? And you say, duh, why did I go through this elaborate ritual? Obviously, I want a million dollars. 
and they go, so you want a million dollars regardless of the consequences. Is that right? And you go, yes, that's what I'm saying. And they go, I just want to be utterly clear. You don't care what happens as long as you get a million dollars. Asking you a third time, right? This is if you're able to telepathically hear them. You say yes. And they go, you got it. Right. Sometimes if you have a deeper, if people who are deep into dark magic, they can have a, they can just sort of bypass that because they're already all in and the demons don't have to warn them as much. Right. So they have packs and empowerments and certain things. So let's, it, let's say that you did that. Then you, let's say you had a back problem and you had a little Vicodin addiction. Right. And your mom has a million dollar life insurance policy. The next day a bus hits your mom, you get the million dollars. You put two and two together, you have a Vicodin addiction, you start doing more and more, eventually you're doing heroin, and you're just starting to do all sorts of horrible stuff because you're just blitzed out of your mind on heroin, you're so horrified by what happened, pretty soon you get some heroin and fentanyl and it shoot up OD, and the demon goes, excellent. Let's say you have the same scenario. You have a Vicodin addiction because you have a bad back. Your mother has a million dollar life insurance policy. You ask the angels for a million dollars, they'll look at it, and they'll say, no, nope, vetoed, because they're higher dimensional beings. So they can see the near-term results. They can see into the future, essentially. And they can see near-term results of decisions you'd make. And they're like guardrails. If it's going to create more disharmony, they'll veto it. They'll only agree to it if it's going to be more harmonious. And another thing is they want you to develop a fishing pole. They don't want to just give you fish. So let's say you ask for abundance, right? And abundance is directly related to self-worth. It really is. I used to hate hearing this when I had super low self-worth. But as my self-worth has increased, the abundance flowing to me has increased. And I now work with super wealthy people. And they have their doubts about various things. But not a one of them has any kind of anything less than a stellar sense of self-worth. They have absolute confidence in their self-worth. And the abundance just flows into them. I mean, they're at a completely different level. And that might be upsetting to some people. What I'm telling you is I'm living proof that you can heal your trauma, you can build up your self-worth, and you can attract abundance. So the angels would not, sort of veto the spell. And what would happen is up would come that self-worth for you to take a look at. Why do I have this lack of self-worth? What's going on with me that I have this? And it would keep coming up until you heal it. And then when you heal it, then the magic works. And it comes to you through synchronicities, all kinds of different things. You just get windfalls, right? A family member gives you a 0% loan. There's all kinds of ways abundance can come through to you. And so for those who are interested in here at the call, I am doing uh, a seven-week course. It's seven Thursdays for about an hour to 90 minutes, um, starting May 16th is the first, and then for seven more. I think it lasts till June 27th, if I remember correctly. Um, but you can see it, you can see it on the site. And if you're interested, you can look into that. And there's a number of angelic magic students that are in the chat. And, you know, if any of you guys want to like co-sign on any kind of results you've had, how it's helped you, basically almost all my students, if they were able to work through anything that came up, they've had like really amazing results. The trick is the working through the emotional content and self-limiting beliefs you have in order to have it come through. And then you can have all kinds of wonderful things. It can help with your marriage. It can help with your children. It can help with your family. Yes, it can help with abundance, right? And there's nothing wrong with asking for abundance. But when you get that abundance, how do you spend it? Do you spend it selfishly? If you do, then that magic could have a negative karma. Especially if you use it to hurt someone, that would be, you know, you're definitely going to get extremely negative karma for that. If conversely, you tie 10% of it to a charity, perhaps you have a friend who's struggling, you know, and you just give them a gift of cash. Maybe you have a friend who's a musician and you pay them a, a large amount of money in order to do music for you, or you pay an artist a lot of money, support the arts for the love of gravy, right? You find someone in your life you can help or find a local charity. Don't give to the big boys. And then you give 10% of that. And then you use the rest of the money to advance yourself in a positive way right? To become more productive, to make more of a positive, harmonious impact on society, right? You got to pay the bills. You got to pay off debts, all this kind of stuff. All of that matters. And there's nothing wrong with asking for it. Now, if you're like, I want a billion dollars 
And then now I'm going to create a foundation to screw over fellow humans. Well, maybe you are able to pull that off, but the karma from that would be severe. And so I talk about all this stuff and how to protect yourself from the negative impacts of it and how to take these gifts the angels are giving us to make the world a more harmonious, peaceful, loving, and compassionate place. That is the goal. And that's what I look for in my students. And I haven't had it happen yet, but you know, if I was to have a student and I realized that they were type or selfish or something like that, for their protection, I would maybe remove them from the group and refund it. Like you have to be serious about, are you willing to look at your shadow? Are you willing to integrate it? And are you willing to do what's necessary in order to have these positive changes in your life to where your life becomes more harmonious and it inspires and enlivens those around you so we can create golden age enclaves and sow the seeds for the golden age of Sat Yuga. Yes, it's 6,000 years out, but we can start the ball rolling on it. We can start building a much better, more beautiful civilization. And the thing is, the Luciferians will let us do it. The next few years is about hunkering down and battening down the hatches. But after that, it's it's go time. And I, you know, welcome anyone who's wanting to um, work on that. So now subject change <coughs> slash drink real quick. So I was recently on James Grunvig's show, Unrestricted Warfare. I love that guy. And he is the absolute master of stumping me. So he showed me this insane video where in Kazakhstan, there's this thing called the Temple of Peace and Harmony or something like that. And it's this giant pyramid and it has this big circular table around it and light comes down through the ceiling. It looks like it's 21st century. It's, it's just beautiful. There's a phoenix with a sword pointing towards it. And the phoenix is like exactly the phoenix is going to rise. After the Malachian system crumbles, the phoenix of the Luciferian system this time is going to rise. Um, and it is uh, extraordinary. And so look up the Kazakhstan. I think it's called the Temple of Peace and Reconciliation or something like that, which is just so Luciferian. Where are the white hats? Ding! Right? <laughs> They're not the white hats. But they are gray hats instead of jet, jet black hats. And so um, you might want to watch that uh, Unrestricted Warfare um, interview. Uh, on uh, Unrestricted Warfare on Rumble. And we we talk about that. I think it's a pretty intriguing show all around. He had great stuff about like the corporation in the United States, all kinds of amazing stuff. And my jaw was on the floor when I saw that. And I was like, man, maybe, because Kazakhstan's like right in the middle of Central Asia. And it kind of makes sense to me. It's on the old Silk Road. And the old Silk Road was uh, a Luciferian thing, improving material prosperity for humanity that got hijacked. What a surprise by Malachian forces, right? Like the Khazarians were squatting on it and taking orders from the Rodanites, black magicians that were squatting in the ruins of Babylon. All right. And so now we're going to end the, um, the first part with a decode of DMX. So I, I, I happen to like rap and listen to it kind of tongue in cheek. Not all rap, but some of it I just enjoy, like the really over the top, like early 2000s and sometimes 2010s. Gangster rap is just really, um, sometimes it's just, it's a guilty pleasure. It's definitely a guilty pleasure. But, you know, like some Biggie, maybe a little bit of like certain Tupac. Um, and I love DMX. I just really like DMX. And so I was listening to his song, um, X going to give it to you. And suddenly it hit me like a ton of bricks. There's always been something different about that song from anything else. Now, remember how I talked about if you're at a certain uh, level of consciousness, that that deity can just operate through you and sort of hijack your mind if you're like really in that consciousness and open to it. I believe that DMX was channeling Lucifer rapping to Moloch. I'm not even kidding. So I'm just going to have not all the lines. Go listen to the song later with the lyrics up. Uh, and he goes, yeah, don't get it twisted. This rap shit is mine, motherfucker. It's not a game. And it's not a fucking game. And if there's anyone who rules rap, it's Lucifer. Like one of the most Luciferian figures around is Ric Flair, right? Who I just find hilarious. But there's like Ric Flair drip, that song. Um, there's the Tyga song, When I Switch Lanes, where the guy goes, uh, Snow on my wrist, call that Rolly Big Bear. I'll just, well, no, I won't. Soft and N word, see it in the light, go, woo, Ric Flair, right? Like, Ric Flair is very much emblematic of that Luciferian narcissism, right? It's it's tongue in cheek, but it's 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 really strong. 
So he goes on to say, um, fuck you, fuck what you've heard. It's what you're hearing. Listen, it's what you're hearing. Listen, he says it over and over. And then he goes, X going to give it to you. In the middle of the Luciferian sigil is a giant X, right? You see Twitter got changed to X, space X, XRP, XLM. Everywhere you look, right, the X, X, uh, X-37B space plane that may have the goods on the 2020 election. Everywhere you turn, there's that Luciferian signature X, right? So X going to give it to you. What? Fuck waiting for you to get it on your own. X going to deliver to you, right? I think that, and then he goes, knock, knock, open up the door. It's real, right? What are they doing right now? Hey, Diddy, is Puff Daddy home? Yeah, we're kicking in your door. And we're coming in and dragging you out and dragging your Malachian bullshit out into the light. And he goes, with the nonstop pop pop from the stainless steel, let me tell you, the Luciferians are going to end a lot of these people on the spot. There'll be no trial straight to execution. Some of them, they're going to have Nuremberg 2.0 show trials that'll be completely rigged. And then he goes, go hard getting busy with it. But I got it such a good heart that I'll make a motherfucker wonder if he did it. Right? Like... He's like, I'll take over someone's consciousness. They'll do something on my behalf and they'll go, did I even just do that right now? And then he goes, damn right. And I'll do it again because I am light. So I got to win. Uh huh. Angels are made of light. Humans are made of earth. Angels are made of light. And uh, gin are made of plasma, the smokeless fire. <laughs> so he's saying I'm made of light. He's saying I am light, right? He doesn't say I am of the light. He doesn't, he says, I'm literally light, right? How many rap songs do they drop the word light in the middle at saying I am light. So I got to win, right? And he goes, break bread with the enemy. Luciferian penetration of the Malachians. Break bread with the enemy. What? No matter how many cats I break bre bread with, I'll break who you're sending me. I'm going to turn or crush anyone who resists my takeover from the Malachians. You motherfuckers never wanted nothing but your life saved. Uh, bitch, and that's on a light day. Give up. Right? The Malachians want their life saved because they think it's a black screen, or worse yet, they might know they go to hell. Right? I'm getting down, down, like a nigga said, freeze. But I won't be the one ending up on his knees. Lucifer's super pissed because for the past 6,000 years, he's had to drop to his knees and kick Mo kiss Moloch's ring. Literally, literally in the astral realm, this has happened for 6,000 years. Every time Moloch demands an audience with Lucifer, Lucifer must go and kiss his ring. And Lucifer hates it with every fiber of his being and plots for 6,000 years how he's going to fucking throw Moloch back in, the, back in the lower astral the minute that the stars are right. Cough, cough, March 21st, 2025. But I won't be the one ending up on his knees, bitch, please. If the only thing you cats did was come out to play, stay out my way, motherfucker. Like, if you're not here to be a part of it, like, just get out of the way, right? Shades of the whole 17th letter of the alphabet, stay indoors. <laughs> get out the way. First, we're going to rock. Then we're going to roll. Who do you think runs rock and roll? It's Lucifer. Then we, then we let it pop. Let it go. Let it go. X going to give it to you. He going to give it to you. He going to give it to you. Third person about himself, or is he talking about someone else? He's talking about Lucifer. X going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. Yeah, first we're going to rock. Then we're going to roll. Then we let it pop. Let it go. Let it go. Right? And goes on. And then he goes, they ain't never gave nothing to me. Right? Because the Malachians want to control everything. And Lucifer's had to steal and hide and work really hard to get all the resources he has during this call yuga. They ain't never given nothing to me. But every time I turn around, they got their hats, hands out wanting something from me. Right? Who does all the work for Moloch? It's Lucifer. I ain't got it, so you can't get it. Like, I'm done, right? Because 20 years ago is a, a split second for deities. Like, DMX, from the uh, Moloch and Lucifer's point of view, is rapping right now in real time. Let's leave it at that, because I ain't with it. Hit it with full strength, right? Like, he's done. I ain't with it anymore. Hit it with full strength, what? I'm a jail blanker, so I face the world like it's Earl in the bullpen. You against me, me against you. Whatever, whenever, blanker, fuck you gonna do. I'm a wolf in sheep's clothing. What? Only blanker that you know who can chill for 6,000 years 
come back and get the streets open, a popular uprising. I've been doing this for 19 years. By the way, that's 19 deity years, which is a great year, right? And so that implies that 19 revolutions of the great year, I can't prove this, of course, was when Lucifer started his like rebellion and fighting against Moloch. So blankers want to fight me, fight these tears. I put in the work. It's all for the kids. The Luciferians hate pedophilia. They find it distasteful. They find it disgusting because they believe in merit. If you're a player and you slay endless pussy, Ric Flair style, who claims to have been with more women than Wilt Chamberlain, which I actually believe because he's had a four decade run of extreme popularity, right? Um, he goes, uh, so they're against, they're like consenting adults go nuts. Even if you're tricking the ladies a little bit, being a player, that's fine. Kids, absolutely not, right? I put in work and it's all for the kids and he's done all the work the past 6,000 years. But these cats done forgot what work is. The Malachians are into nepotism and monopoly, and they've had it just given to them because they rule with an iron fist through spiritual divine right. They don't know who we be looking. They're trying to find us, but they don't know who we are. But they don't know who they see, Blanker. They don't understand because of the cloak of Luciferian confusion. Hey, yo, where are my Blankers at? I know I got them in the streets. Give them love, and they give it back. If I give you guys stuff, which Lucifer will do, you're going to love me back. Oh, will you love me when I give you the anti-gravity, free energy, all the super high-tech med beds, all the stuff? People are going to love it. People are going to eat it up. Talk too much for too long. Don't give up. You're too strong. This is like a rallying cry to people who are Luciferian and or Mosties who will support his rise. Love to the wild, wild hundreds. Shout out to Blankers That Done It. And it ain't, it ain't even about the dough. It's about getting down for what you stand for, yo, for real. And he stands for, he wants to actually liberate humanity from God. He wants to prove that you can do it on your own. And by the way, God, it was a mistake giving them free will. It's all ego. It's just pure ego. When I sat down and read these lyrics and thought about it, 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 it literally blew my fucking mind that this is the most Luciferian song I've ever read in my entire life. And it lays it all out. And it just hit me the other day. And I think it's like one of the more amazing, certainly I've had uh, decodes because I just think it's, I just think it's super duper money. Okay. So that is the end of part one coming back in tart part two with Q and a. So put it, um, Excuse me. So just put your question in all caps. And I'm not sure if moderator L will be able to do it. If not, I will find them. But you got to put it in all caps if you want me to answer it. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, Q and A in the second half after a short break. Please put questions in all caps. And um, yeah. So I will be back in about five minutes and we'll go from there.
All right. And I reached out to Ellen. I guess she's having technical difficulties. So I will be handling it. Let's see here. Um, all right. Last I saw was the illustrious and wonderful Heather Russo. So delicious, nutritious, said it sounds okay. Sound is good, better. You know, Ian puts out great content, Zachary Hansen, when I'm pausing Dr. Terry Burns' lecture on Dr. John D's Hieroglyphic Monad series on YouTube. Wow, that is a uh, high praise. You know, um, actually these books, let's see if I can get it to my finger to point correctly. See these two gigantic leather bound volumes? Those are like, oops, in the wrong way. God, it's reversed right here. Those, those two right there are the complete works of Dr. John D. I have not read all the books on my shelf. I've read almost all the astrology books. Um, maybe not cover to cover, but like huge sections of it. Um, but I have not read all the books on my shelf. There are books that I plan to get to. You know, when there's that two weeks where the grid goes down or whatever, if that ever happens, like I'll get caught up on reading. I spend too much time reading. Um, what do you call it? Uh, online news and so forth. And then Howard, Howard Ramberg said, oh my God, I made it, bro. Shout out from Norway. Thank you and for being here. Oh, thank you. Um, Howard Ramberg. That's a fantastic name. Harvard Ramberg. It sounds like you should be wielding a battle ax for the most high. I don't know. Maybe you want to like give the Lucy's a hand and wiping out the Mollies. I don't know, but that's a badass Viking name. Respect, brother. You will probably get on Joe after the call. You <laughs> That would be, I mean, well, like if you mean after 2025, that'd be amazing. Uh, Sam said he's booked out. I want to say years, plural. Um, so he was like, I can't do that, bro. I, I don't even get on the show that much. And I was like, fair point. But, you know, you got to shoot your shot on that. Alpha Brain will get the most popular podcast side effect. You might flip flop on the moon landing. Getting the most popular side effect, you might flip flop on the moon landing. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, I'm of the opinion that what we see uh, of the moon landing is, is faked, but that humans have absolutely been to the moon probably as early as the 50s. I think the Nazis beat the U.S. by a decade to the moon. Um, and then I think the U.S. has been there. And I think that NASA's primary job is to hide the advanced technology that comes from uh, the post-war Nazi international. And also that we were given one prototype of DeGlocka, which the United States secret space program, which is quite a bit behind the Nazis one uh, is built on. And then there's probably other, you know, there's certainly one in Europe, I'm sure probably some of the wealthy <clears throat> black nobility families have their own space programs because some of them are trillionaires or even quadrillionaires. Yes, I'm serious. They have literally unfathomable amounts of money, some of them, and so they could bankroll it themselves. Um, so Zachary gets a little laughy laugh. Oh, um, I haven't heard, and I, I'm very reticent to touch that first one uh, for reasons that perhaps I'll be able to explain someday, but I've learned not to touch that one. I don't know why. They don't like it when I talk about their, wait for it, sacred cows. Same time as APEP rock in the clips. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't actually looked into it. So I don't know whether they went through with it. You did really great with Sam. Thank you so much. It's kind of you to say. I guess for Milwaukee's, it really is about all about the kids. It is. That's why they're pushing it. And that's why they're trying to mainstream it. They're desperate. They're hoping if they mainstream it, this just hit me actually. They're hoping if they mainstream it, it'll keep those portals open longer because they know the Lucy's are going to go around and wipe it out can see it not sure what you're saying that too uh the raid on diddy's house too bro lucy's in real time absolutely resist not evil right right uh but the lucy's will do more than just resist they'll put bullets in these people's brains they'll take them out uh and uh that's why i think that there's some merit to that the triple god of the hindus is actually mirrored in the west by uh moloch lucifer and the most high i just struggle with i don't like shiva being moloch that one i don't like but vishnu the preserver right right as the Malakans are about to destroy everything vishnu the preserver lucifer appears and uh prevents that from happening we are stuck in the golden age and we're like frozen in golden age consciousness and therefore we can't evolve further we can't do a new iteration and reach even a higher level with the next generation of the golden age without a 
descent downward through the underworld. And so again, Vishnu, the preserver slash Lucifer comes in to bring uh, evolution. Moloch and the Most High, they both don't like evolution in completely polar opposite ways. The Most High is like, just be harmonious. And the Moloccans are like, just be horrible, dead, materialist, evil, and no advancement for society. The evolutionary impulse comes from Lucifer, Vishnu. And uh, that would make Brahma, the creator god, the Most High, and Vishnu, Lucifer. And I don't like this one, but Moloch would have to be Shiva then. I actually like Shiva, but... They have a non-dual outlook in there. And so it just completely changes the flavor of that deity. And as I think you could say Shiva is maybe the higher octave of Moloch. I don't even like that. I, I don't know. I have to sit with that one. Do you have an Instagram? No, but I'm actually working on getting onto different platforms. It's a huge pain in the ass. But I have, um, I'll, give a, I'll give a shout out. She'll watch it later. She just wasn't able to get on for some reason. But shout out to L who is um, helping me with all manner of um, executive assistant stuff. And uh, she's amazing. And so she's going to move me on to Instagram among elsewhere. I also have to do like shorter videos on Instagram and all this kind of stuff. It's complicated as fuck being on tons of different platforms. And I need to be spending my time working on astrology for, you know, my clients working on angelic magic. Like I just, I, I'm going to work with this, really wealthy person to create golden age enclave think tanks and how to actualize that like in a rational way that isn't like 60s and 70s delusional communist trash right because it does look to some degree like the hippie communes but it'd be imagine a actually constructed from a basis of reason high tech um healing based trauma-informed sacred geometry right on ley lines uh, food forest, like har harmony with nature, right? Imagine that and really well funded. So I'm starting a think tank with this really wealthy man and his wealthy friends. And it's just, I, I don't have time to like be moving everything over. So hopefully L will be able to do that at some point. They monopolize magic. Yep, absolutely. It's brilliant. It was a brilliant stroke. M magic, uh, numerology, um, astrology, geomancy right they use geomancy 100 percent. just l look at my peter shampoo the first uh conversation with him they went down ley lines on 9 11 <laughs> they went down ley lines like they took a, a like 90 degree turn to go down ley lines to where it was absolutely crystal clear their intent and they used that to do the black magic of 9 11 by traveling on those ley lines Solomon got a ring from Michael to control the demons at least. I believe it was Gabriel. And yes, he did. Uh, I want to say it's Archangel Gabriel. Um, I, Archangel Michael is like probably my favorite. He saved my life when I was 19 in a car wreck. I didn't know it at the time. I know now. Um, my middle name is Michael. So I really love Archangel Michael. But I believe it's, it's either Gabriel or... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Gabriel. It's not Raziel, even though Raziel is like the sort of archangel of magic, you could say, um, certainly of knowledge. The way you talk about dark magic sounds a lot like chaos theory and math. That's interesting. Um, I would really have to stew on that. I love how you're always able to take things and you mathematize it. Um, math is just like numeral. You should look into numerology, Hirschman, if you haven't already. That could be really powerful for you with your math brain. You might find that numerology could radically transform your life. So if you're, if you're not already well-versed in it, which you might be, then check that out because I know you love math. Um, Kingmaker goes dot, dot, dot. That's true at Hirschman. Sham angels are used to control the 72 demons of the Goetia. No. You know, uh, I believe that's correct. The 72 demons of the Goetia are, are you could say, the, uh, the other end of the bar magnet of the 72 Sham angels. And that's... There's things I won't say on this channel, like deep, deep, occult esoteric knowledge uh but i will say that that reflection is not unique to the shem angels and the demons of the goetia i will say that hello all um what tips can you share to ensure the angels aren't negative beings trying to trick us great question get this one all the time what did yeshua say you shall know them by their fruits so before angels i was living in my mom's basement literally in my mid-40s just went through a divorce, quit my job to do White Lotus of Light, 
astrology mostly was the main thing at the time. And it became this channel. Um, and I, uh, dead broke, in fact, horribly in debt. Um, no kind of any prospect seemingly of any kind. Uh, I had a very bad porn addiction. I still smoke weed, but I use it now mostly to, uh, help with pain management, right? Like when I went to Mexico, I didn't smoke. I was out of Mexico and then LA for two weeks and I had zero urge to smoke because I live in Oregon where it's wet and damp. It really hurts my back. So I just, I, I smoke weed mostly just for pain management. Back then I was just like getting obliterated all the time. And I was super deeply addicted, super deeply addicted for like 27 years to hardcore. And I mean, hardcore pornography. Nothing I could do would change it. I was stuck in deep trauma that was limiting, limiting who I was as a person. I was, I'm ashamed to say, or I guess, you know, I got to love that part of myself that went through that, but I have remorse. That's the best way of putting it. I have remorse for the chaos I brought into other people's life. Right. So I can't say angels for other people, right? Because everyone's different. If you're in my class, I'll teach you how to recognize them, right? And go into it in depth, right? It's just, it's too much for this show. Maybe I can do an episode on it, right? But um, I mean, I can clip out what I'm saying here too, but demons bring more chaos into your life. And pretty quickly, right? Um, when you have negative lower astral entities, you have bad luck right? You, you have uh, just misfortune follow you. When you work with angels, you start having more harmony in your life, more peace, more compassion, more healing. They will force you to look at your trauma and your shadow and heal and integrate both of those things. I now, you know, the angels told me way back in 2021, you'll work with centimillionaire and billionaire clients. And that seemed insane itself to me. And I'm not saying this to just, oh, Ian's so great. I'm saying this to A, prove these positive things that are happening in my life and B, hopefully to inspire people. And there's lots of different ways to do this, to do the healing of their trauma and taking full accountability for their life in order to make a positive impact and unlock all the natural God-given talents you have, right? So I have just seen my life be more harmonious. I'm a better father. I'm a, you know, um, recently went through a relationship dissolving, but I was a much better partner and I handled that breakup better than I've ever handled one. It's still in process. It's still very painful, but I've been able to really navigate that. I'm just much kinder to people. I used to be much, much angrier and even at times uh, verbally abusive to my now teenage son. And I have terrible remorse about that. I don't do that anymore. I almost never lose my temper with him anymore. The proof's in the pudding. All my life is just far more harmonious. I'm far more peaceful. I'm far more healed. I'm helping heal other people. I'm feeling love surge within me. I'm feeling joy surge within me. And everyone around me who's known me for a long period of time sees like what they, they're like, we always loved you, Ian, but you were pretty fucked up. And I'm like, I know. Because I had terrible, I'll just tell you, I talk about it on the channel. I'm guessing you're a new person. I was, when I was a kid, it was not my father, but there was extended family who would periodically essentially kidnap me is not quite the right word. They would be taking care of me and they would take me to where there was other children and we would all be uh, assaulted in a pedophile ring. And that left me with really severe complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, not PTSD, CPTSD, which is a completely different level. I once worked with a trauma specialist, and this again, isn't to wave my dick around. It's actually to hopefully inspire people who have trauma that it is possible to heal it and that it completely unlocks and changes your life, right? This trauma specialist said he had only seen one person. He was fairly young, right? He was like 38, maybe. So it's not like this guy was in his seventies or something, but he said he'd only seen one patient that was on the same level of trauma as me and that that person had been in a uh, black site, tortured, right? Like a intelligence agency run torture pit. And I haven't completely healed it and I've used a lot of techniques to heal that, but 
my trauma is greatly healed and the angels supercharged it. And I was able to break a 27 year porn addiction. So you tell me, does those sound like bad guys to you? If those are bad guys to you, then I might question your definition of that word. Um, and I'm not saying it in a mocking way. I'm just saying like, to me, from my base, from my personal experience, it's incontrovertible and unquestionable. And these beings have multiple times, three separate times that I'm aware of, saved my life to where statistically I absolutely should have died, including one happened very recently. Two of them have happened in the past year and a half. And so I have utter respect for those beings. X is Lucy, right? Absolutely correct. Woo, yeah. Dude, that's wild. I know, isn't it? You must be, this must be back when I was doing the X, uh, going to give it to you, decode. Um, sounds like you got a Mount Crushmore nomination. Great show with Info Hat. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So I was like, it, Sam said off camera, he's like, you got it, dude. And he's like, if I was giving it to you, you you'd have it, but it's got to be the audience thing, right? That he said afterwards. But when they got off, he said, like, one of them said Mount Crushmore. And Sam goes, yeah. Yeah, actually, right? And then they, they said that, that it's from the audience or whatever. So I said this to a friend of mine and I said, well, there's nowhere to go from here. And he said, what if what if they replaced the other three faces on Mount Crushmore with your face? And I was like, no, no, that's too obscene. I would instead not be on Mount Crushmore and they'd have a crazy horse entire mountain where they carved a giant statue out that's made of mountain. I'm just kidding, but yeah, uh, I just think that that's like, so awesome Mount Crushmore and that's fucking humbling because he's had like basically a hundred other guests. So um, to be in the top four is amazing. Dude, just turn in. There's Alex Sinardo, former student uh, numerology. I would at least say uh, moderately expert in it. I would say expert, but he would go, oh, no, I'm not an expert. Blah, 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 blah. Wouldn't you, Alex? You would not own that. You're like pretty much an expert in it. Will you be doing another class in the future? Yeah, um, May 16th. And then I'll probably be doing a class in, I'm guessing it would have to be July into August or maybe early August, maybe the first week of August into, it's got to end in September because I'm going to be doing an Archangelic Magic class uh, for former students. So, and that'll be part of or adjacent to the, um, the uh, White Lotus of Light in-person gathering for people. All right, let's see. Is 50 cents Lucy or most high? I think he's Lucy, right? He came out and said, at least Trump, like what is happening with this nonsense with the weaponized immigration? Hard to say, but I would say he's Lucy. I, I wouldn't say he's most high. Very, very, very few people are. And most high music, according to the angels, and um, yeah, according to the angels, is music that's sung in praise of nature and the most high. If you're praising existence and the most high, then that's most high music. Anything else is some form of Luciferian music. And the Malachians just basically let out a really nasty post, like, you know, $70 worth of Taco Bell <laughs> fart and just like stink up the room. They have no talent. Do you guys exist only in Earth or does it exist in our planets and stars as well? You know, I'm not sure about this. I think that it operates radically differently on different planets. I'm certain they have some kind of karmic cycle and consciousness cycle, but I'm, uh, I don't have information on that. I do know, weirdly, the Most High and Moloch are anchored to this planet. Lucifer is apparently uh, trying to create a galactic empire and sees Earth as pivotal because Earth's, the spiritual and magical capability and psychic ability of Earthlings, right, is higher than any other there's other like sort of sub races of humanity or were a sub race of humanity that, you know, crashed here or was marooned here or was forced to stay here that they lost a, a war with their fellow spacefaring humans uh, that likely we can even have children with. This is Walter Bosley's theory. And I actually think he, he may be right. You might be able to have viable offspring with the aliens that exist out there that were seeded from the Anunnaki. It's us. It's not some crazy thing. It's, it's us, but our variant, which is specific to this planet and also the electromagnetic field of the planet, soul, right? Soul, S-O-L, our sun, right? Saturn, Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, and all the combinations we have with the moon right there, all that stuff creates this super powerful, magical, psychic being, 
that is humanity, we have the most upside supposedly in the galaxy for that specifically. There's tons of other races way smarter than us, way faster than us, certainly more technologically advanced. Um, you know, some of them are like really good at all three things, but supposedly we have the highest top end in terms of, or among the highest in terms of like spiritual potency, psychic ability, magical ability. Magic does operate differently on different planets, even within our solar system. Um, I don't know if Yugas exist on other planets in our solar system. Probably something fairly similar does, <clears throat> but then it would get progressively different the further you got away from us, right? Will you be doing their class in the future? I asked it. When is anger? I don't understand that question. If you want to elaborate on it, I will answer it, but I don't understand the question. If Lucy rules in the bronze and silver Yugas, what are the deities rule in other Yugas and how many Yugas exist? So there's four different yugas. Um, let me see if I can find the Bibu Dev Mizra um, charts here, and I will throw it up. Ba, 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 ba. Bibu Dev Mizra is the man. If you're new to the channel, you got to, got to, got to watch both of the interviews. I talked too much in the first one. What a shock. But in the second one, uh, I do a bit of a better job. I find I thrive when I just can hog all the airtime and then I struggle. And it's one of the things I'm trying to work on, actually. Um, I struggle to uh, honor other people's time uh, when they're on the channel. And, and Brother Bibbo is like very polite. And so this is the complete Yuga cycle. So you have this is when uh, the fall of Atlantis is the cataclysmos. Uh, when you're moving from Satya to trade, it's cataclysmos is when the Younger Dryas Impact and or Micronova, which they're not mutually exclusive. I'm coming around that both happened simultaneously. Then there's the Trade Yuga. So the most high rules, the Satya Yugas, and then you have the Cataclysmos. Then Descending Silver Age Lucifer rules. Descending Dwapara Yuga Lucifer rules plus the interstitial period. And then in this 300-year period, you shift from Luciferian consciousness down into Kali Yuga. They open... Sometime right in the hard line is when they open the portals by harming children uh, somewhere near Babylon, possibly in Chaldea. I'm not sure. It could be it's in Chaldea and then moved to Babylon. Um, I forget the chronology there. So then, yeah, the Kali Yugas, Moloch rules. Um, then the ek, ek Pyrosis, which I think is actually a spiritual fire, right? It's a cataclysm by fire, but I think it's a spiritual fire. And I think it's what Bibodev Nisra theorizes causes the ascending cycle is a blast of positive energy from the active galactic nucleus. And specifically, he thinks that it's um, negatively ionized radiation, and that causes our brains to grow, our psychic abilities. Portals can open up to the higher astral instead of the lower. You know, ascended masters, angels, other higher vibrational beings can communicate with us more easily. So then you have Lucifer rules the Dupara ascending yuga, bronze age, the Treta silver yuga, uh, Silver Age, and then Most High rules the Golden Ages. And it just repeats, and every time it's a slightly different, um, it's a slightly different variation uh, when when there's the reboot. When you get down to the Kali Yuga and then you reboot and you start the cycle over again, because really we're at the end of a full cycle. Kali Yuga is kind of like the end. And then Dwapara Yuga ascending is the beginning. Um, and we can know this because uh, the... Galactic center will be perfectly aligned with the horizon on December 21st in about 70 years. Um, is it the galactic center, the galactic cross? And that starts a new great year, uh, astrologically. That's the theory that I ascribe to anyways. There's tons of debate in astrology and always things on my channel. They're not definitive. They're my opinion based on a lot of research. Do you think it seemed like DMX knew he was going to die? You know, I wonder about some of these Luciferians that died if they were pu pulled into protection. Um, you know, like I wonder if the our, uh, JFK Jr. is still alive thing could have some legs. That would be amazing. I would, you know, or it could be a clone of him. <laughs> um, I do actually think they have cloning tech now. I didn't. And then the angels kind of said there was cloning tech. And I was like, whoa, that was a mind blower. And it's probably the um, Antarctic Germans. That's seems to be the tip of the spear and the lower Luciferian, I think might be the Antarctic Germans because all the qualities that the post-war Antarctic German Nazi international has uh, match what the angels told me the Luciferians had. 
And I've really been chewing on that and lower luciferin than dipping into full-blown Malachianism with like the camps and stuff like that. But their resting consciousness was lower luciferin, higher Malachianism, but they would dip down and do these horrible atrocities. Like, look at the difference just real quick, right? The U.S. is definitely luciferian and probably higher vibrational luciferian. But if you look at communist Stal Stalin's communist Russia, that's pure Malachianism. Pure. The Nazis are arguably better. They killed less people, a lot less people, actually, than the communists did. Way less, right? Were they good? Absolutely not. Did they do atrocities? Absolutely Right. Do I condemn the atrocities as someone who is a most high affiliated person? Absolutely. They're horrific. They're absolutely horrific and unforgivable. But again, they're not good guys, Luciferians, especially the lower part. They're they're extremely ruthless. And I believe that at that point in time in the 40s, that was their resting state. And they routinely would dip into Malachian consciousness. But when they escaped afterwards and they penetrated all these cabinets, all these corporations, all this stuff, anti-gravity free energy, it's all stuff that's been described to me by the angels as being the qualities of the Luciferians. And that fight is going to happen in that dark Luciferian, lighter Malachian sphere. And I'm starting to think that they're going to be the vanguard of the Luciferians, which is that should give you pause, right? That should make you go, ugh, right? That's a bit horrifying, but I try and be honest on this channel and that's kind of the read I have. And, you know, it's things are more complicated than it appears. There was atrocities committed all, all over the place. The Japanese committed arguably the worst atrocities in China and Korea. Um, you know, like uh, Stalin committed and uh, Stalin and uh, the other communists beforehand, they did, did the Holodomor, starved 2 million people or whatever it was to death, especially in Ukraine, right? They did just uh, horrible atrocities, all the Stalinist purges, the purges, the gulags, dead materialism, atheism, right? Like created this 75-year hyper-death empire that was absolutely evil and horrific. Uh, and... Patton said at the end of the war, right before he died, under mysterious circumstances, we backed the wrong side. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that at all. And I want to, once again, to be utterly clear, say that the Nazis committed absolute atrocities. And anyone who says otherwise is lying. Were the numbers the same as we hear so often mentioned? Maybe not. Does it matter? No. No, it actually does not matter. Is that used for propaganda? Sure. Okay. Yes. And? Does that mean that it's not horrible? Because the propaganda is always most powerful when it's mostly rooted in truth, right? That's why if you go on Yandex, be careful because of some people reported to me that you're more likely to get fire sites, right? So don't ever look up like a payment thing, like paying child support. A friend of mine said they did that on Yandex, which is the Russian search engine like Google. And then they actually, they got rerouted to a fake site or something, got their phone, got a virus. So be careful. But if you go to Yandex, and you type up Biden is bad, you'll get 5 trillion pages of it and it'll all be true. If you'd say Putin is bad, they'll be like, no, he isn't. Putin's fantastic. Here he is riding a bear while having a three-way with two Ukrainian models, right? <laughs> like, like, it'll be like, Vladimir Putin's the greatest man who ever lived. And Russia's never done anything bad, even once. But when they're talking about the US, what's the best propaganda just to tell the truth, right? So you can take the horrible atrocities of World War II, use that as propaganda, and it can be true, but maybe fudge the numbers a bit. Maybe things were slightly different than you say. Maybe the guys you were fighting against weren't as pure evil as they say, and maybe you weren't as dyed-in-the-wool dyed white purity as you claim, even though we have Dresden, the post-war, like, horrible uh, concentration camps for Germans, right, um, which there were so horrible atrocities were committed by um, Eisenhower and some of the other U.S. generals. Uh, so there was atrocities committed on all sides, and people saying otherwise are just fucking lying. So that was complicated. But that should give anyone pause who's like, hey, these Luciferians just sound great. They might be a very nasty set of people, but I get the sense that if it is them, they would have evolved uh, to where they're not going to dip down into that Malachian consciousness this time around. I mean, it has been 75 or 80 years. Who knows what their culture is? 75 years later, all the original Nazis would be long dead. Could they still be pure evil? Maybe. Um, they definitely are out there. Watch that Jason Rice. Uh, 
exposition on go to Robert Seffer's channel and look up Antarctica. It came out earlier this year. Jason Rice talks about it. It's just absolutely wild. So anyways, <clears throat> Howard Hubbard Ramberger says, My name, Havard, means leader, warrior, guardian, Old Norse, and Ramberg is actually Robinberg, not a ram, but a raven, so Raven Mountain. That's awesome. I love it. Who presently represents the most high realm? There's tons of people on the ground. There's tons of regular people on the ground, and there's what I call sleeper cells of the most high, people who are waking up now, including people who are in positions of power, some of whom I know, like my friend Nick, who's a very wealthy man, who's a CEO of a ton of companies. He's a, he's a beautiful soul. And like all of us, you have to operate a certain, especially if you're a business person, you have to sometimes operate in that Luciferian consciousness or else you get your clock clean to business. But then when you take that money, you treat your employees well, which he does. He takes care of all the people related to his business. He does charity stuff. And, you know, he's wanting to help fund the Golden Age enclaves. So that's an example of a very powerful individual, nine figures guy, right? Centimillionaire um, who represents that. About the only political leader that I'm aware of is the King of Jordan. That's pretty much it. It's a short, short, short list. Most Thai people tend to get clapped by Malachians. Malachians hate them and they recognize them instantly. They recognize that vibration instantly. Jordan, I know, is uh, at the center of... There are forces at work in the world other than the will of evil, Frodo. I can say this with 100% certainty because I know it firsthand. And some of the forces for good put a lot of effort into keeping Jordan neutral, keeping it peaceful, and keeping it intact. And the King of Jordan represents the Most High, and that's about it. There's probably others. Like, it could be that the royalty in Bhutan are Most High. I think they probably are because it's one of the most peaceful, beautiful places on earth they're kind of non-dual so it could be that the non-dual faction operates out and through bhutan i don't know but they feel like they have a most high energy to me <laughs> you'll notice this isn't a very lengthy list because basically almost everywhere else on earth is corrupted and of course they are we're in the kali yuga we're at the tail end of the kali yuga but the kali yuga nonetheless you're gonna see way more most high people being repped all over the place including even in the new luciferian world government the new Luciferian financial system, you know, which will be interplanetary uh, within our solar system, at least those you're going to see most Thai people represented because the consciousness will be at that level. And in the golden age enclaves, it'll be most Thai consciousness. Did you see my one on the bridge and the wire on here or, or bit shoot? I did not. Um, do you, I, I, I'm not familiar with your channel. If you're a content creator, truth seek and ye shall find too. No, but that sounds cool. Uh, you know, people check it out. Um, always like rep another content creators who are doing good work. Does the most high rule the entire universe? Even the aliens? No, no. Nope. Most high and Moloch are specific to our planet. They're what are called earthbound deities, which almost all human deities are earthbound. Weirdly Lucifer. And then, well, that's true. Shiva's off planet. Some of the, that's interesting. Some of the Hindu deities seem to be off planet. It's probably an as above, so below thing. So imagine that there's probably a most high energy on other planets, but let's say you're on the Pleiades, right? And the planet around the Pleiades that has uh, mer people, it would be some kind of mer person, right? It would be some kind of mer folk deity, whatever that looks like. Or maybe they'd be like, wow, our deity is a guy who doesn't have a fish for a lower body. Can you imagine it? How weird, right? Kind of like Ganesha has an elephant head. Like who knows how they represent it, but it would be through an alien thing. So probably because of the hermetic principle of as above, so below, something like that is true, but it gets so weird. Like again, that flopping from just Western deities to Indian deities on earth isn't a perfect fit. Devas are an aspect of the angels. The um, I think it's the Asuras are aspects of the demons, right? But they're not exactly the same. And that's just through a cultural difference because it's to some degree or another, the universe is created by mind. And so when you interact with the Hindu deities, you're, at, you're, you're operating with another facet or octave of a deity than 
through the Western modes of that deity. And so that would be even more different on other planets. This is all speculative. I don't know it for sure other than I do know that Moloch and the Most High, I, I understood that those two deities, right, which is very different from if there's a similar deity on another planet, those are anchored here. Lucifer seems to be just free somehow, just completely free. And so do some of the Hindu deities. So I don't know. Like I, I have incomplete gnosis on this. I'm doing my best I can to answer this on the fly. So hopefully that's interesting and helpful perhaps. Are Molly's pushing all the carbon emission? Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. All the fake green stuff. Like I'm an environmentalist, but I'm an old school environmentalist. Protect, protect habitat, protect species, clean up pollution, right? None of this. Oh, CO2 is all that matters, guys. We can rape the earth. Just CO2, CO2. Press that. Uh, please like that hit button, guys. Yeah, or even hit that like button. But I think that's why you did that. What is Aramon? Aramon, I would say, is an aspect of the dead materialist part of um, Moloch. Um, some people accuse me of ripping off uh, Steiner, which is not true. I certainly was somewhat familiar with Steiner's model, but... If you look at Steiner's model, it forms a cross. So you have Christ at the top, Christ consciousness, Antichrist consciousness, Luciferian consciousness, and Aramonic consciousness. And they're in opposition to one another in, in various different ways. I say that there's three interlocking spheres that actually represent a spiral up and a spiral down in consciousness. So in a certain sense, you could say that the concept that the angels have, have given me about this is somewhat of a mixture between Ken Wilbur, I think is his name, uh, his spiral dynamics theory and uh, Steiner's work. There's there's overlap between those two people's work, but it came to me directly from Gnosis from the angels. And so people can believe that or not. It's different. It's not an opposition. It's a spiral up and down. Most high and Malachianism is an opposition, uh, but the uh, it, it, it's a spiral of consciousness. As far as I know, a dark deity destruction always personally linked them to Moloch, but I'm sure really. Okay, what's the point of caps if you don't care? <laughs> because I just wanted to read everyone's uh, things, and it does stick out a little more, and I just pass more quickly through the other ones. Does weed and psychedelics help in activating psychic abilities? Yes, but you need to be careful with it because if it becomes a crutch and you don't earn it through meditation and merit, you become dependent on a substance and therefore it's just not anywhere near as good. But yes, if you take five MEO DMT, you can become hyper psychic for some period of time, right? But then you come down off it. You're like, was that even real? Because you didn't earn it through merit. You earned it. You cheated. You entered a cheat code. Uh, it can be really useful for people who haven't had any experience with mysticism. So um, let's see here. Since people are saying that I need to uh, only go to all caps, I'm just going to skip everyone else. Um, is there a significance to someone having their logna, moon, and sun, and mutable signs? Yeah, it just means they're highly adaptable people. I mean, there's a lot more than that, but I don't really... Consider whatever you do for work. If someone asks you to just do all the time and I get constant requests to do free work like all the time or to hang out with people I don't know. I just, I, I just, in the interest of time, I can't do that. Um, Linda Johnson, a thousand sons. You can, you can teach yourself and certainly answer questions like this. You know, there's tons of information out there, you know, um, if you'd like to do a reading, I'd love to do a reading for you, although you would need to book it in the next 18 days because I'm closing down non-retainer uh, re uh, and or astrological concierge levels. But um, I just kind of find those questions kind of frustrating. Sometimes I'm willing to answer them and other times I'm just like, you know, like this is what I do for work and I actually am needing more abundance right now. I actually have some major debts and new mega expenses due to family stuff that I have to take care of. And so, yeah, I mean, if you'd like to go deep, I would love to write for you. Otherwise, Linda Johnson would be the first thing that I would read if you want to learn about it yourself. You can, yeah, work on your trauma. If you work on and heal your trauma and integrate your shadow, you won't be approached. You won't be approached directly anymore. You won't be vibrating at a frequency to where you can interact with more. Is there any significance for someone having their... Yeah, I already answered that. Yes, there's tons of significance to that. J 
just means among other things you're highly adaptable but maybe you're too wishy-washy and don't have strong enough boundaries and you tend to merge into other people for good and ill um you know like you can get taken advantage of often probably what do you think of neville goddard's techniques for manifesting yes it's it's amazing is using this towards a specific person black magic you were great on tinfoil hat show by the way um anytime you try and manipulate another's free will even if they're evil you're doing black magic anytime you harm someone else that's obviously controlling someone else's free will that's black magic oh i want to make i love i just want my boyfriend to come back can i do a love magic spell on him yeah you can but it's black magic what you can do is you can do a spell saying i want to draw love to me that's not black magic that creates a more harmonious world the more loving people are brought together who work together and help each other heal the better for the planet trying to make a specific individual behave in a way you want is black magic by definition there is a way that you can get around that if you do a spell to influence someone else influence magic you can say if it is in my soul's highest good and in accordance with the divine plan of the most high and honoring the free will of all who are involved then you can like let's say you want to do healing magic for your aunt who's in a coma well obviously she can't consent to the magic so what you do is by saying those words i just said you ask her higher self to agree, right? Or say you have a dead materialist aunt and you want to help her quit being an alcoholic. Again, healing magic, that's just good, right? Well, no, you have to ask that person's permission. Just like I don't look at people's chart without the explicit permission. People all the time come to me and go, oh, can, can you tell me about this guy's chart? And I'm like, do you have his explicit permission for me to look? And if the answer is no, I will not look at it. That information is too powerful. So it's all about consent. But if it's white magic, it's true consent. See, they can't do black magic curses to kill someone unless that person tried to kill them or successfully killed a family member, something like that to where there's a karmic right. No hook, no coat. If you don't have a hook up, you can't put a coat on it. If there isn't a karmic hook, you can't put a black magic spell on it unless the person consents because either they're wanting you to obliterate them, which it's a free will universe, or more likely you trick them into consenting, right? Like you roofie someone right? You're tricking them into consenting. Very often I find that people want to do love spells. Very often women want to do it. Usually men are more interested in like they want to dominate their boss. Like if they have a more kind of a lower not thought through thing, right? Where they're trying to uh, impinge on someone else's will. Usually with women, it's they want a man to fall in love with them. And usually with men, sometimes they want that. But usually they just want to bang whatever woman, right? Which again, that's a spiritual roofie. Um, but I find men are just much more about they want to um, beat some competition. They want to dominate someone who dominates them um, or they want money and they don't care about the consequences. Women often want abundance as well, but women will very often want to make a man fall in love with them, not realizing that that's black magic. I'm not saying you're doing that, Nicole. I'm just saying um, the fact that you have a female name made me think of that because you said manifesting towards a specific person. And I, if I had to roll the dice, I would say that that's what you were asking, but I don't know. And so I'm not condemning you. People just don't know these rules because it's all been hidden from us. And that's one of the things is now people are able to go on the internet and open up the spiritual equivalent of an AK-47, like the Goetias and the Lesser Key of Solomon, and they don't understand what they're doing. And even what might seem like white magic at first blush, if it's used incorrectly, you can compel angels to do things actually to some degree. You usually can't harm someone unless like the person's a pedophile is probably the only time an angel will let you harm someone. Or if you were in a siege situation, right? Where you're in an ancient city and it's under siege and you could do black magic or I mean, not black magic, angelic magic to destroy your enemies because they're it's, it's known that if they come in the city, they're going to kill all the men, rape all the women and enslave the women and children who they don't kill. Right. So you then have a karmic right to defend yourself. Right. Because it's implied the minute they get through the city wall. Right. So do you see you can't you can't do anything to limit someone else's free will. This is why I spend so much time on ethics and, and morals and magic. And it seems really constrictive and limiting. I'm trying to help you. And also as a teacher, I don't want to be teaching people things unless I'm super explicit about the downsides. If you don't want to incarnate here anymore, don't do magic of any kind because white magic or black magic makes you much more likely to incarnate here or someplace worse if you do enough black magic, but you have to do an extraordinary amount. 
Yes, I would say yes to both of those. Have you ever heard of ancestors visiting people? Absolutely. It absolutely is, bro. You're wrong about that. I'll just tell you, you're wrong. If you go and find apple fritter weed and you do magic, your psychic senses are opened up. It absolutely is a cheat code. I know because I've done it. So maybe you haven't experienced it. I have. Speaking from my experience, it's a cheat code. And certainly heavier psychedelics absolutely are. I'm just going to have to disagree with you on that. Um, Paul, you can unlock them. Yes, I was able to do it with weed. You got to. All right, let's see. Yeah, um, that's possible uh, that maybe it's a higher level of the egregore concept. I looked at the thousand books. It's like 1700. Oh, no, it's not. You looked up the wrong one. Uh, let's see. Linda Johnson, a thousand sons. It's probably some. You, you probably looked up like a different variant. So let's see the hardcover. Let's see. Oh, is it out of print? What? Oh, well, it's 300 bucks here, which is absolutely retarded. What the hell? Huh? I guess it's out of print. Who knew? I did not know that. Well, I stand corrected. I mean, it's that's quite a bit different from 17,000, but there's there's copies on Amazon for 302.99 and 399 shipping. Nuts. So you know Sam's a high roller when he just doesn't blink and orders it on the fly. My apologies. I thought that was readily available. Um, Light on Life by Hart Defoe. Is that freaking... <laughs> um, That's not a good intro. Uh, I don't know if these are out of print. Elements of Beta Astrology by uh, Dr. K.S. Chirac. Um, th th these are a little bit harder. Boy, that's a pity about Linda Johnson. It's funny, I have a $300 astrology book on the show. I would not have guessed that that's the most expensive astrology book I have. I would not have guessed it. There it is. I bought it back in 2007 for like probably 20 bucks. Let's see, $22.95 it says in the back. So I, my apologies, I thought it would be much cheaper. Wow, this... This book, which I unfortunately have dog-eared and stuff, was a better investment. Oh, and everybody gets to see I'm wearing pajama bottoms. That's funny. Um, they're comfy. What can I say, right? It's the it's the meeting at work where you're just wearing underwear. Thank God I wasn't just wearing underwear. I actually totally forgot. I'm very embarrassed right now. Um, yeah, so that one or Heart Defoe. Since you guys have already seen them in pajamas, why not? Um, this one's super, super basic. It's almost basic to the point of not that great. Um, it's just like most of the ones other than a thousand suns, it's just so simply written. She did a really good job beneath a Vedic sky. That's super. This one's almost too basic. I don't know. Maybe that's rare for all I know. This one's more advanced, but it's reasonably basic light on life an introduction to the astrology of India, heart Defoe and Robert Svoboda. Um, gosh. Most of the books I have are super advanced. Um, I feel like this one's fairly simple. This one's also um, a little simpler book, uh, Predictive Astrology and Insight. It's not particularly memorable, so I suspect it's not super good. Like, I, I haven't really read introduction stuff in a long, long time. That's wild that that book is so rare. Huh. This is a better investment than Amazon, probably. Let's see, five is it 15x? I wonder if Amazon's 15x since 2007. That'd be funny that investing in a random Vedic astrology book would be maybe better than investing in Amazon or Netflix. That's nutty. Um, 15x, I mean, that's a lot. 1500%. Just got to work. Much love from NC. Good to see you, Ryan. Is God pure light? Um, I don't know. I, I I, I caught sort of a, a glimpse a couple of times uh, of the most high one time with psychedelics cheat code. Um, and yeah, that was basically the, how I, my mind understood it. Um, Lucifer's not a son. Lucifer is a created angel. Um, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I just know that Lucifer is definitely not. And I know that the most high as we know it and Moloch as we know it is earthbound. 
Lucifer is pretty big on breaking rules and is the smartest of the three, actually. The most high is wisdom. And so wisdom is, is the highest form of intelligence. But when it comes to cleverness and trickiness and figuring out how to bend rules, Lucifer is the most amazing. It's like Lucifer's intellect is uh, almost beyond comprehension. Like Thoth is incredibly intellectual, but man, Lucifer's just on a completely different level. It's not a cheat code for me. Well, try a different strain, my brother. Um, well, but it is because because if you don't if you don't have it, then maybe you can't do it with, because you don't have enough merit. I can see angels without it, but I can see angels like almost crystal clear with specifically the strain known as apple fritter. Advice to someone wanting to get a big suck where to begin before even books. Um, I have a very super uh, basic intro series. I have six more, all the houses, learning about all the houses, all the planets, which I'm going to have a very light version of my channel. At some point, I'm going to probably teach a beginner class. I might write a beginner book. I don't know. Um, yeah. So is the Gnostic goddess Sophia a feminine aspect of the most high? That's a great question. I would say, yes, it's the feminine aspect to some degree of the most high. And then the, um, I forget what the masculine name is, which isn't very focused upon, right? Because uh, Sophia gave birth to Yaldabaoth, the Demiurge, which is basically Mara and the Hindu conception. But I mean, not all this stuff works. Thank you for the book display. I love seeing other people's books. Thanks for sharing. Um, what What do you, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let's just be us. What's the big deal? Um what does Edgar Casey and his readings fit into things? He was just like an incredible channel of information. He was able to tap into what are known as the Akashic records. Um, it's not something, I mean, it might be how I get some of my gnosis, but there's people who can go to it. Like I've been to the Akashic records and I've been inside them. They exist in the astral space, but I haven't been able to like go in, access it and remember it. One time I was able to go in but I couldn't even see what I was researching. And when I opened a book, because my mind just conceived of it visually as an old school gigantic library, when I opened the book on the subject I wanted, there was just light and I couldn't remember. Another time I went in, total mind wipe, came out suddenly conscious again. I, I do know people who can access it. And Edgar Casey could like access the Akashic records almost at will when he was in a trance state. He was just an incredible channel or medium exactly you don't know bro like w the question is is why are you being so hostile like do you have a weed problem is that why you're being so hostile because you're really pushing this and i don't understand why and there's no need to we're all friends here right i'm just sharing my opinion if you don't believe me go nuts like you know cheech and chong it up i don't care that's free will universe do what you like but you're like you're being kind of just a little bit pushy energetically. I'm feeling that, and I'm just saying let's let's have peace. We're we're on the same team. If if you are reacting that way, that means that you subconsciously know that there's an issue with it, right? And it's probably you're trying not to feel some kind of feelings. Believe me, I understand. I have total compassion for it. I was super 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 addicted to weed and would smoke myself retarded on the regular for years. I'm not judging you. I, and I'm just sharing my own experience. If you don't experience it that way, I honor your experience. But you don't need to try and convince me. And I don't think you're trying to convince me. I think you're trying to convince yourself. It's just something to reflect on. Um, will your class teach us or help us learn how to connect with ancestors? No, and I don't recommend it because if they're not currently incarnated, which is fairly unlikely because almost everyone's incarnated right now, then they would be hopefully in the heavenly realm, but you could contact ones that are stuck. They would be the most likely to respond. If you have any ancestors who got murdered or committed suicide or otherwise are stuck here, there, there can be very malevolent spirits. So no, I will not be teaching that because that's a super dangerous thing to do. Again, free will universe, go nuts, do what you like. But, you know, I personally won't be... I have at times contacted, had contact with the dead. That's one of the least, that's one of the, um, that's one of the least wise groups to interact with. The worst ones to interact with, in my opinion, are extraterrestrials because they have no skin in the game, right? And you don't know. And even the ones that are more benevolent, they still just aren't attached to earth the same way like earthbound deities or even demons are. 
So ETs are the most tricky, most dangerous. They're often hyper intelligent. They're sometimes hyper psychic. We might have a higher top end, but they have some cases millennia or even millions of years more experience than us. And they can easily dupe you. I just don't recommend it. Jinn are the next most dangerous unless you're able to contact a blue gin, which is hyper risky. The red gin hate us with every fiber of our being and want to wipe, wipe us out. And they're more malevolent than demons who want humans to perpetuate. They, they want to genocide us. The red gin want to wipe us out so they can take the planet back over again. They're trapped in a different dimension and they're hyper dangerous to so the gin and then the demons. The demons are actually better than, than gin or ET in my opinion. But somewhere around, somewhere around uh, demons is um, dead who are lost souls. And they can be worse than a lot of demons in terms of immediately destructive. You can have a poltergeist in your house. So just do what you want, but be super careful when it comes to interacting with the, um, interacting with the dead. I just really want to say, um, so blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine. Thanks, needed perspective. Lion people yet? I'm not sure what you mean by lion people. I prefer having a high top end over a loose bottom end. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, guys. Well, it's been almost exactly two hours. And so I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream here. And again, everyone, like not everything I'm going to say resonates with you. And you don't have to agree or believe in it or act on it or whatever. Anything that doesn't resonate with you is not part of your soul's journey. That said, if you have a big reaction to something I say, probably they say uh, irritation shows ego in certain Buddhist traditions. So it might be worth reflecting on why am I having that reaction to what Ian's saying. I'm usually pretty careful not to be an extreme asshole. I'll be pointed, but I won't be an asshole. And so if you're having an extreme reaction to something I'm saying this, especially based on my experience, and I was a little forceful about that whole uh, drug thing, just because I think it's a dead end and a trap and prevents you, you can't really attain true spiritual advancement if you're stuck in drugs. I know because I tried it for years and, you know, it didn't work. Doing healing my trauma, integrating my shadow, that worked in spades. So this is a great stream, y'all. So happy I finally made it. Max Life, awesome stuff. It resonates greatly. Thanks. Well, much love to you, brother. And, uh, you know, like I, I, I encourage disagreement. What I mean by that is if we can all be respectful, and you were pretty respectful, it, was, it felt energetically strong, and maybe you're just a strong spirit, and so it felt, it's also Mercury retrograde, it's easy to have miscommunications right now. Maybe I was mis, you know, in, in trying to interpret text without tone, right? You can hear my tone of voice, I can't hear yours. And so I, I feel like you're a powerful soul, uh, Bre Brett. I feel like you're a powerful soul, and um, if you're being forceful and I'm being forceful, but I can't hear your tone, it could be I'm misinterpreting you, in which case I apologize. Um, but I totally welcome disagreement. There is one subject which um, I, I'm not even going to mention because it'll trigger some people and they'll get angry. There is one subject that I pretty much have no time for anymore, but people will discover that if they watch it. Thanks. I'm going to keep watching a video. Your stuff is resonating a lot, and I'm stoked. That's great, Isaiah. So glad to have you on the channel. Priscilla, red and blue gins. I wonder if that's where Genie on Aladdin was blue. I think so. Someone with the cult knowledge put that in. Thank you for your time, Ian. Walk with the shoe. Oh, thank you so much. Hard enough dealing with people that are alive in this world. I don't want to be dealing with dead people. Yeah, they, they very often are completely, um, they've gone insane in most cases. It's not a trap for me because it's not a drug. Okay. Well, I mean, like, bro, like I smoked before this uh, episode, like I'm, I guess, high right now, but I did it in very small moderation. And it's to deal with my back. So I'm certainly not anti-weed. What I'm saying is, is uh, what I'm saying is, is that like overuse of it, it becomes a crutch and it can actually have the opposite effect. If I smoke too much, the angels will be like, dude, what are you doing? Where's the reverence? Where's the reverence for what we're doing here in the ritual? And I'll be like, okay, you're right. Maybe you don't have a problem with weed, but I sure did. And so I was speaking from my experience with that. Maybe that's not the case with you. Yeah. Awesome. Much love, brother. Take care and thank you for coming. And that's what I mean. We can we can have disagreements. I don't want people to be lockstep. That's Malachianism, right? We need to be able to have robust debate and share with one another. You know what I mean? And we can have differing opinions and that's okay. We don't need to be threatened by that. 
They're, they're, that used to bring about cultural enrichment, right? That's how we grow. That's how we evolve. Red, blue gins are orbs seen, orange and blue. Um, Sort of. It's tricky. There's books on gins out there. Oh, is the red gin the devil since devil's depicted as red? I, I, I think that, you know, certainly among the Arabic culture, like gin, I don't want to say they're interchangeable with demons, but because of the uh, Arabic peninsula seems to be where a lot of the interdimensional gateways specifically to the gin realm exist. That's why it's so prevalent there. Jinn do exist. There's jinn portals in the United States, but there's fuck tons on the Arabic peninsulas. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, looking into XLM now and revisiting XRP based on your discussion with Sam. Um, only with capital that you can lose, right? Precious metals first, gold and silver first, right? For food, water, medicine first, then, and point and click to defend yourself, Right heaven forbid that's necessary, but you need to be able to defend yourself and your family. Once you have food, water, medicine, ways to defend yourself, if you believe in that, right? Then silver and gold. And then after that, if you want to get speculative, XRP and XLM, watch Black Swan Capitalists. They're way, way, way beyond my understanding. I'm just going to skip through these. I own one of one XRP NFTs, LOL. Hey, that's could be worth something. I don't know. I think the NFTs will in the future be worth something the way baseball cards are from, but some of them are worth nothing. Some old baseball cards are worth nothing and others from that exact same era, you know, where there's only so many printed are worth millions, you know? Um, all right. I think we are done. Our homies, open minds, having open conversations, never a bad thing. Perfect place to end. Much love to you all. Thank you so much. Um, if you're interested in the Angelic Magic class, there is a cap of 28 people on it. I think I have four people signed up right now, so there's plenty of it. But we'll be closing it down probably uh, maybe the – I don't know. I don't want to close it right when things go – Mercury goes prograde. I'll probably close it down a couple of days, but you want to do it as far in advance as possible so we can get – so you can get the materials, although – um, actually, you know what? I, I won't close it down until the 15th, the day before, because um, the new way I'm doing it will allow you that between week between classes, you'll be able to buy um, the necessary book, like the textbook we write from. By the way, I'm going to write my own book because that, that book is deeply flawed, but that's where we're at currently. Um, and we'll hodl spiritual books for now. And yeah, absolutely. Blessings. Howard, much love. Good stuff. Good job again on Tinfoil Hat. Thank you so much. I really just felt like what I did there was I got out of my own way and it just like sort of came through me. And and that's when, when you start to get in that state, that flow state, you'll find that you're almost have less free will and you're operating as like a, an emanation of whatever vibration of consciousness you're on. And that's why it's so important to work on your consciousness and just get out of your own way and then somehow all your gifts that are given to us by God just flow through us. So um, because so much magic has been done there because the Atlanteans who landed in that general region from Egypt up to what would become Scythia and Sumeria, they had the best, I think, uh, magical materials, um, India being probably second and then uh, China maybe third. Uh, where do you buy the textbook? Um, well, just uh, join the class and then you get it. I, I don't want to recommend the book without the class, not out of some greed place. There's real severe problems in it. A Luciferian gray magician wrote it and there's severe problems. And I'm trying to determine if the sigils, which are critical and the Shem talisman are uh, not open source. What do you call that? Uh, public domain. If they're public domain, then I will probably in the next six months have my own book written, which will be most high consciousness huge sections on ethics as opposed to do whatever you want, which is in the book. There's huge caveats that have to go in. And I don't feel comfortable mentioning that text outside of the class because it could be dangerous to you. So if you want to send me an email, I guess I can send you the title of it, but I take no responsibility for what you choose to do. And I urge extreme caution with magic, even, even angelic magic. It, it is possible for it to go wrong and can have negative karmic repercussions for you. Say good vibes your way. Oh, yeah. Watch Sam Kiltani. ISO 222 crypto coins. Yep. Those are those are the ones that will be at the center of fintech, I believe. There will be other crypto that will explode past that for uh, Web 3.0 and other things. We're almost done here. It's highest step military beliefs underneath it should say enough. Very interesting. 
All right. Highest in the world. Okay. Well, I'm going to end there. Much love, everyone. Take care and have a wonderful weekend. See you next week. And very soon, I'm going to have Michael Laflamme on. And um, I'm going to have some other guests come on. I just, I'm mad busy right now. I need to get a bit more organized next week or two. I should start rolling out um, conversational series again and or subject matter videos, not just the live streams. Live streams are just take a lot less prep. So um, I'll roll those out and we'll have that sick ass intro that I love so much. Yeah, be an awesome person, by the way. Thank you so much. Like the video. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye.